Set! Fire! Gun out of action! Good today. Good. I'll tell you a little bit about what we're going to do here. We're going to demonstrate how the World War II 75 millimeter M1 pack howitzer on M8 carriage operates during World War II. This artillery piece was designed in 1927. The way they designed this, the concept was take a cannon that we have, a piece of artillery, and make it so it can be broken down into seven components and carried by seven pack mules, hence we call it the pack howitzer. Because you can break this piece down into seven groups, put it on seven mules, and carry it anywhere you needed to go, mountainous terrain, you know, throughout Fort Sill, these were trained to test the mule, along with the horses that you see out here as well. In a pinch, Marines and soldiers during the Pacific War actually disassembled this and carried this piece by piece up into the mountains so you could better fill the fire on the uh, enemy locations. And there's actually a picture you might have seen in the North Gallery showing a Pac-75 tied into the side of the hill. Those Marines had brought that pack houser up there. They brought it up there piece by piece, over 300 feet to get into that firing position. They fire this this particular piece fires fires this projectile. It's called an M48. Basically, all this is is a big hollow steel cavity with a pound and a half of TNT inside. It has a time delay fuse with a super quick more time delay. When I say super quick. It just means the minute it hits the ground, the fuse hits the ground, it's going to detonate. Time delay is only 0.5 seconds, but that's enough delay for the projectile to go in the ground and make a big, pretty big crater. Now, since this is a howitzer, the round comes separate from the projectile like this, so that what we can do to make this projectile go farther, there's four charges inside this. Each of these bags is a different charge, charge one, two, three, four. So if I put all four of, the, four of these charges inside this casing, this projectile will go out to 7,600 yards. You know, just a little over three miles. If you don't want it to go very far, you just put the one charge in, and that will get you out, you know, you're roughly looking at 1,000 yards. That in combination with the fact that the gun can elevate up and down, you can have a, practically, if you dig the spade in, fire the weapon with charge one, you can have it shoot up and land just over there in the pole of one. <laughs> so once we set the fuse super quick or time delay, and I set the charge in here, all the soldier artillery would do is put the round in, cradle the round like so, the round's ready to go into the weapon and fire. Blades we're going to be firing here in a few minutes is a full pound of uh, gunpowder inside this. It's going to be very loud, so I highly recommend for the small children to put their hands over their ears just to keep from the concussion, and we'll try to not break y'all's glass on your guitars. That was just a joke. <laughs> we won't break your glass. Now, if at any time after we do the demonstration you would like to come up, actually work the, work the artillery piece, feel how heavy this is, I encourage everyone to come up and ask any questions you have and we'll do the best of our ability to answer it for you. And then of course we have the World War II Jeep, this is a 1944 Willys. This was the prime mover for this little pack howitzer. These pack howitzers were also designed to be dropped out of C-47 airplanes. Soldiers on the drop zone would police up the six bundles hopefully get it together within a certain period of time to start putting rounds down range on enemy positions. phones connecting them back with a fire direction center. They always had a field phone. They didn't have radios yet. By 1943, they started having radios, but the field phone was the most important piece of equipment to make this an effective artillery firing weapon. The phone would ring 
Answering fire mission. One HE super quick fuse. Bills four hundred. Good set. Set fire. Got out of action. That's your typical fire mission. Then if the if the fire direction center wanted us to fire more rounds, they would tell us fire for effect. We would keep shooting until they call and tell us to cease fire. I'm glad y'all got to see that. That's a great treat, especially for the young ladies and boys here. I know my seven-year-old son loves that big boom. If you want to come up. Check it out if you want to get in the Jeep and get your photo taken. I encourage you, that's what we have this out here for. This is history you can actually touch and interact with. Thank y'all for coming out today.